So today I'm back with more horror and thriller reviews and usually I try to have a theme or focus for these videos but as I look at the books I have to talk about today there is basically one of everything. Each book is very unique and different with a different subgenre, all of that. So I'm going to say that this video has something for everyone because I'm basically talking about every subgenre under the sun. So if that sounds good, hopefully I can find something that sounds good to you. Let's get started. First, I read Indian Burial Ground by Nick Mandina, and this is a book I received for review from the publisher. I read this author last year, but this is an entirely different story, and this is a piece of indigenous horror focusing on a young person, a young woman who is going back to the reserve that she is from to go live with her boyfriend. However, something horrible happens to her boyfriend. It appears to be suicide, but they start to wonder if there's something else going on, something deeper. This is a piece of supernatural horror, and it's very quickly learned what that supernatural piece is. I like this one a lot more than the author's first book. It definitely is very character focused and so it is slower paced. It's more of a slow burn and takes a while to get going but the horror elements are there again. You definitely can see the plants. It's very clearly noted as to what is perhaps going on and so I think if you love things like Stephen Graham Jones you love that indigenous horror that is very much about the characters but also has the creepiness, the strangeness to it. I really felt like this was one of the strongest horror books I've read so far this year and I talked about it. it's been a rough year for me for horror so far in terms of new releases and this is definitely at the forefront right now because I just thought it was a solid piece of horror that delivered exactly what I was looking for and I had a lot of fun with it. I would definitely read more by this author at this point. Next we have The House of Last Resort by Christopher Golden and this is another new release sent to me by the publisher. This is one that follows a young couple who are barely getting by and they get the opportunity to go to this family house that is in Italy and of course it sounds too good to be true so of course what could possibly go wrong. Their grandparents, or specifically their grandfather, is horrified that they're doing this and there's tons of older people, older generation, telling them to steer clear and of course as it always is in horror stories, the people don't listen to good advice and they just go along because again it seems too perfect and they don't realize that there might be more than meets the eye. This is clearly a haunted house set up for a story which I've said so many times on my channel is a hard subgenre of horror for me to love just just because I find it to be very familiar. I was hopeful that the Italian setting would make this one feel a bit more fresh. I would love to go and vacation and travel to Italy and see it for myself. And I think that was my biggest disappointment with this book is that while it is set in Italy, I didn't get a great sense of the place. This book is relatively short and I wish I had spent more time building that world and building the cultural elements into the story so that it felt a bit more lush and rich. I wanted to feel like I was on vacation even when I was staying home and instead this one just moved very quickly like it it's a story again that's very short and it just kind of hit the points and bullets of what you would expect in a haunted house story and I didn't find it to be very special for me it was pretty average I didn't get overly attached to the characters again you have the setup of the newlyweds or the young couple that are just going along blindly and I do struggle with the general trope of stupid people in horror because it always seems to be the easiest way to get people into horrible situations is just to have have them ignore all the warnings and I would love to see more horror out there where the characters are a little bit more smart. So if you have recommendations for those I would love to hear them down below. If I haven't read them I'll definitely check them out. Now let's segue to some young adult mysteries and thrillers which I don't always talk about a lot on my channel but these ones I had to say yes to for review. The first one is Missing Clarissa by Ripley Jones and this is the first book in a series. This one came out I believe last year. It follows two young teenagers that decide to start a true crime podcast. Specifically, they want to focus on a case that happened in 1999 where there was a young girl in their town that went missing and so they are trying to go back through the facts and talk to everyone and try to figure out what happened and this story I really loved because of the fact that it reminded me of the books I read as a teenager. A lot of people assume based off the books I read now that I was always reading Fear Street and Goosebumps growing up but mystery stories with teenage protagonists, this was my jam. These were the kind of stories I used to read and because of that this one felt very nostalgic for my youth even though again it's a new release it's not one I personally read but it was very much in that same vein. I love amateur detectives that have no business getting into police work going along with that of course as someone who is fascinated by true crime and podcasting and all of that it fit in very well 
And I love a missing story case because there's always the question of was the person kidnapped and why are they missing? And I think there's just a lot more complexity or different avenues an author can go down when someone is missing versus when they are already found dead because again, you already know the conclusion as opposed to a missing story where there is a potential that maybe the person will come back. So I like this one. It's definitely meant for a younger audience. So the story was perhaps more simplistic, but if I had a teenager in my life that was interested in the genre like I would, I would definitely buy and recommend this book to them if they were looking for something like that. And then the publisher also sent me The Other Lola, also by Ripley Jones, and this is the second book in this mystery series. And you could start here because it's more of a companion, but it does somewhat spoil some of the details of the last book. So if you are interested in both, I would recommend starting at the beginning. This one follows the same podcasters, the same teenagers, and they were given a new case. Basically, there is this girl who went missing, and then supposedly she has come back. However, her sister doesn't believe that the person who's come back is actually her sister. Everyone else does, but not her. So she goes to these two to try to investigate and figure out who this person is. This one I didn't enjoy as much. I think it comes down to the fact that I've seen this plot set up a lot. And my complaint with this plot setup is that it's very limited because there are two avenues. I'm not spoiling anything. This is just from the back cover. The fact is either this is the person that they are supposed to be or it's not. And those are the only two options and so I find that again as opposed to a missing person case like I just talked about this one feels very railroaded in terms of a conclusion you can kind of make guesses very early on what's probably happening just for the sake of the story in order to make it interesting and I didn't love it as much. I didn't find it as interesting. But again, I would definitely be open to reading more in this series just because I like the characters. It just really depends on the case whether or not it has a lot of meat to it, which I think the first one did and the second one felt a little bit weaker. Next, let's switch it up and talk about backlist fiction. And I read Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. And this is a thriller that is very much inspired by the crimes of Ted Bundy. So specifically, we follow a young woman who is in a sorority in college and she witnesses the horrendous crimes of the final murders of Ted Bundy before he was finally captured and convicted. And so I like this book and premise. If you don't follow my true crime content, I am very fascinated by the Ted Bundy case. It's one where I've read several of the books all surrounding it. And so I was very interested in this one as a piece of fiction. I also loved in terms of premise that it was focused on the victims. I thought that it was a very refreshing and important perspective to have in a modern book that I believe just came out last year. So it's relatively new, even though I'm calling it backlist here. In terms of execution, I struggle with this one. First and foremost, I just don't find college life, particularly American sorority life, to be that interesting. And soon enough, it does get into the actual action of the story. And where I struggle with this is a few layers. One is the fact that I didn't find the characters to be particularly fleshed out. If the whole point of the story was to make these victims into real fleshed out individuals and not just kind of side points or bullet notes inside of this true crime case, I don't think the author succeeded. I don't really have a better sense of who these individuals are. I found their stories to be very hollow. And I really feel like the story or the author was attempting to write about the trauma and particularly focusing on the survivors of how they had to live the rest of their life after this in the sensationalized case. And so again, interesting in premise, but honestly, I found the actual execution to be quite boring. And again, this is coming from someone who is otherwise fascinated by this case. I literally was re-watching some of the Ted Bundy movies at the same time I was reading this and I just couldn't get very invested in the story and had to kind of push myself through just to finish up and give a review here. So not what I would recommend. I know other people who I highly respect on YouTube love this story so perhaps you still want to try it out for yourself. Next we had The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. A lot of people are probably surprised I haven't read this one by now. This is a post-apocalyptic story that was huge when it came out and people were very careful with the synopsis they were giving back then so I'm going to do the same. Basically we follow a girl who has gifts. She is very special, but we don't really know why. And within the story, without giving away too much, she ends up going on this journey in order to fulfill a purpose. And it's one that took a while for me to get invested in. I just didn't really find myself hooked from the beginning. And I think it has a lot to do again with the character work. So I found the characters to be a little bit flat and took a really long time, a really long period of me traveling with them and towards the end of the story when I finally felt more of an emotional connection when things started to happen. So 
So it is one that I pushed through because it was so beloved and maybe a little bit the excitement and all of the hype that was around the book back when it came out affected my reading experience today because I had those huge expectations. I like this book by the end. I actually did enjoy it a fair amount and gave it a pretty positive review, but I don't usually like to recommend books that in my mind take a while to get going. I also should note that in terms of a premise and setup, this reminds me a lot of the video game and now TV show The Last of Us, and I think that also lessened my enjoyment because while it was a very similar plot, the characters in the video game and then the TV show are so much more well fleshed out, and so I found their counterparts in this story to be quite hollow and just not to have the same bond and relationship that really made me fall in love with that story. So again, sometimes it's the circumstances around reading the story that might affect it more than the story itself. So keep that all in mind and take my review with a grain of salt. Next is We Were Villains by ML Rio, and I believe this is a piece of young adult fiction, but I do think it has all ages appeal. This one is set in the present day where someone is just getting out of jail. You find out that something happened 10 years ago when they were participating in part of this Shakespearean play, and so they are telling their story and explaining what happened all those years ago. This is one that I was interested in because of the fact that I'd love to read more dark academia. I'd love to do a whole video of recommendations on the topic, but I held off reading it because of the fact that I have a very hit or miss relationship when it comes to Shakespeare. I respect it, it is important, but I never had a good time reading it in school. I'm happy to say that this book I think will have a lot of appeal to those of you that love Shakespeare and have that nostalgia for it, but it also works perfectly well for people like myself who are happy to let other people continue on with those works and perhaps just watch the plays rather than read it in school or for fun on their own. So this is one that is very much told in the acts of a Shakespearean play. So we have the five acts, the climax, and the fall within the story. And I think it's a really good mix between traditional dark academia, but having it focus on the play rather than the school itself gives it a bit of a different focus. I like the dread and the question of what happened. And again, I think it's classified as young adult, but the reason I feel cautious with that is the fact that, again, the characters, and I feel like the story has a bit of maturity to it that I don't always see in young adult books and avoid some of the classic tropes. So I personally thought it was quite interesting. I would recommend it. If you love Dark Academia, this is definitely one I would put on your list. And I also read This Dark Endeavor by Kenneth Opal. This is another young adult book. This one is horror, but it is definitely one I recommend even if you are an adult reader like myself because it was gripping. So in the story, we follow the young man of Victor Frankenstein along with his twin brother. Something horrible happens to his brother, and of course, Victor decides to try to bring his brother back to life using the help of his friend, Elizabeth and they get pulled into this dark tale. So this of course is a reimagining or replay of the classic work of Frankenstein which I've now read so I'm really enjoying now going through all the different variations and stories that are inspired by the original work and this one is definitely one of my front runners as one of my favorites. I think that if you enjoy the story by Kristen White that I constantly recommend on this channel I think you'll really enjoy this one as well. It has a similar feel, very gothic, very brooding and again whenever I hear the young adult label on a book I have certain expectations. I expect there to be heavy emphasis on love triangles and things like that, but instead this one leans much more into the aspects you would expect. The protagonists are young and the story is told in a relatively simple way in terms of the writing and prose, but there is a beauty to it. There is, again, something engrossing about the obsession that is written in the story that I really love surrounding the Frankenstein tales that I love the most. So if you're open to reading a young adult book, again, that bends the usual tropes, I really recommend this one. I had a great time reading it. It's short, it's fun, it's fast, and I just had a good time with it, so hopefully you will too. And last, I read Deeper Than the Dead by Tammy Hoog, and this is my first time reading this author, and it definitely won't be the last. This is a story, a thriller, that is set in the 1980s, and it starts out with four children who are playing in the woods and come across this dead body. Of course, the police are called in and they have to investigate, and there is the question of whether or not this is an individual case, or soon enough it becomes perhaps apparent or at least appears to be that of a serial killer. And so they have to go and investigate and see how it ties together with previous crimes. And I really ended up enjoying this one. I think some of the best aspects of the story tie in with the fact that it is set when it is. So as the author acknowledges in the preface of the story is that criminal psychology and forensic were quite limited at that time. And so it's very much addressed in the book, the fact that they can't just throw off and use DNA evidence and things along the way 
make the case a lot harder to solve. At the same time, the story is taking place after several serial killers have been publicized in the news, so things like Ted Bundy and so forth. So the characters and the police officers are aware that serial killers exist, and they're still coming to terms with that. So it's a really nice balance with the time period it's set in, and you see a lot of the stereotypes and challenges of those days, so the treatment of women, the different misogyny that is placed within especially the police force, the way that the children witnesses are treated along the way, and there's various elements that involve this women's shelter and there's just layers of complications. It's very much a story that involves characters that are not necessarily morally right or in the good situation. Instead, they're those that are making poor choices, people that are abusing their power, and a lot of interesting criticisms of different roles. And I just thought it was very interesting to read. It reminded me a lot of Cop Town by Karen Slaughter, but honestly, I enjoyed this one quite a bit more. It took maybe a couple chapters before I really got hooked, but once I got hooked, I could not stop reading it and just wanted to take every opportunity to finish my book. And you know that's a good sign. I believe there's two more books in this Loose Companion series, so I will definitely be continuing on, so expect more reviews. And I believe this author has written quite a bit else besides this series, so if you have recommendations for where I should go next after I finish up this one, I would love to hear it down below because this author definitely has some favorite potential. I binged through this book and can't wait to keep going with it. So that's it for this video here. I'd love to know of the books I talked about. Which ones are you planning on checking out for yourself? Did I actually find something for everyone? Or are you left waiting for my next video when I have more recommendations for you all? If you're new to my channel and do want to stick around and subscribe, I do read horror thrillers, science fiction, fantasy, and other dark things. If you want to help me out with this video, you can give me a thumbs up. You can drop a comment. Even if it's just an emoji, it lets me know you're here. Don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you never miss a video from me. Otherwise, I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.